Welcome to Watch Your Tokyo About, where I review two ongoing Koto Tokusatsu series, Kamen Rider Zero One and Kishiru Sentai Resolder. This week's reviews are for episode 8 and 31, respectively. Kamen Rider Zero One, episode 8, The Destruction Begins Now. Aruto and Isamu are both get their medical examinations at a hospital primarily employed by Humigears. As Yuwa works on a secret project, Metsubojinrai.net turns their attention to her and launch an attack. Who won't make it out of the beginning of the end? Aruto gets his medical examination done by the Humigir Mashira-chan, a popular nurse, and is told of the advances in the field of um, medical that Humigirs are achieving by Izu. At the same time, Yuwa is overseeing the construction of the Giga Units, three giant mech uh, units created to help fight against Metsubojinrai.net. And speaking of Metsubojinrai.net, Horobi Jin and a and another little assassin from the previous episode attack the AIMS headquarters to steal data and equipment they are working on, injuring Yua in the conflict. But the day isn't over when it discover when they discover that Masura Chan has almost reached sentience, making her a target for the cyber terrorist group. This week's, this week's episode was great. Metsubojinrai.net makes their first big move against the protagonist. The episode expands a bit more on their overall goal. They're acting on the orders of the Ark, the structure they're trying to rebuild, and is the location of their main headquarters. So, possibly hinting that the Ark itself might actually be sentient, could be an AI. No, the, the overall, po possibly the end boss of this series. We see more of Yua working for her mysterious employer, who is a part of Zyatek, which you should make a note of that name as it has connections to the upcoming sixth Kamen Rider of the series. She's helping oversee the creation of mech units to fight against the antagonists. But let's be honest, apart from the fact they're there to foreshadow Zero One's breaking mammoth mech, uh, creating three giant death machines to fight a group of cyber hacking terrorists isn't really the smartest of ideas, and to no surprise at all, all of them got hacked and went on a rampage. Well, we only see one, but very much implied all of them are going to go on a rampage. Genius move right there. But moving on, even with all of this going on, all the main characters had a part to play in this episode, and it worked out great. The highlight of this episode is definitely the action from start to finish. All the fight scenes were incredible. Cinematography and choreography was amazing and helps make the episode even better. The pacing of the episode was good and given what happened, I'm surprised it wasn't rushed at all. This week's episode featured the proper debut of Kamen Rider Horobi, the poison and scorpion themed Kamen Rider of the series. Horobi's debut was absolutely amazing. Given he's a he's been a writer longer than any of the other characters in the series, it definitely shows, kind of, he has the no-sell uh, type of fighting where nothing nothing that hits him has any effect, he just kind of brushes it, brushes it off and just like, you're of little, little of importance to me, so I'm just going to dispatch you quickly, and it's amazing. The fight between him and Vulcan is just, was another highlight of this episode, it's just so badass, and they're like, this is how you should really introduce like a really cool villain, and he is like, uh, I'm not particularly a fan of helmet designs, uh, design, but I do like color design, and I do like how he transforms compared to Jin. When Jin transforms, the flying falcon that he summons kind of just uh, goes behind and covers him with his wings and then merges to create the armor. With uh, Horobi, the scorpion stings him in the chest and then flips over, then just grabs his entire body, merges into him to create the armor. I do like that as actually a really cool looking transformation scene. So Horobi's proper debut in this episode was absolutely amazing. His fight scene as well. Definitely one of my favorite episodes of this, of this, a uh, favorite scenes of this series so far. Overall, I give this episode a rating of five out of five, an amazing and great episode, progressing the story while giving a huge impact to the series. So this is uh, probably where like things are definitely going to get bigger from now on, considering it's the, the, the destruction begins now and Metsubojinrai.net is making their first big push against humans, against aims, against hidden intelligence and everyone. So can't wait to see more. Kishidu Sentai Resolger, episode 31, Melody from the Sky. 
Nada has fatally injured Ko and is completely possessed by Kaisor, but Ko believes he can still save him, but when a new flying Minosaur arrives, the Resolders need Pitan's help to stop it, but can they break his seal in time? After the end of the previous episode, Ko is fatally slashed across the back by Nada, as the Geisel Gama takes over the ladder. Despite being injured, Ko still believes that Nada can be freed from the armor, despite it being the ladder's choice to wear it. At the same time, a giant flying Minosaur arrives and produces music that makes people laugh and dance. With all but Ko, Kanalo, and Otto under the effects of the Minosaur, they decide to combat a flying foe. They need to undo the seal of the flying Kishiru Pitan, but during their attempts to do so, Gai Sorg and Gai Chirius arrive to fight Ko and Kanalo. This was an alright episode, due to the ending of the previous episode, I would have thought they'd focus more on the Nada Gai Sorg subplot in this episode, but they don't. It shares its screen time with the Monster of the Week subplot, literally after they bring Ko back to try and heal him and go straight into the Monster of the Week subplot, but no, when Yui brings up the Minosaur's appearance, the Gai Sorg subplot doesn't factor in until roughly halfway through the episode, but, but given the promo for next week's episode, they, they're they really going to focus on Nada and Gai Sorg, so it seems like this episode was kind of a slight breather, although I don't know why. The Monster of the Week subplot was alright. I do do think they did a good job of connecting, connecting it to Peter and the Kishiru Otto found and the one they need to properly unsealed to fight this Minosaur. This episode debuts the Heihei Hei Solen armor and the Kishiru Pterodon and Yokuru O. The Heihei Hei armor actually looks really good, I like the design of it, the coloring really stands out on Rusol Red, and the winged capes give them a more regal-like look, fitting that the Rusoldiers are also knight-themed. Kishiru Pterodon and his fighter mode, Yokuru O, are really cool as well, especially the latter. Fight cinematography and choreography was good in this episode, especially a fight between Ko and Geisel, and when Ko gets the Hey Hey armor, which are great scenes. Pacing up the episode was overall fine. So overall for this episode, I give it a rating of 3.5 Rusols out of 5. Above average episode with some cool scenes in action, but killed the tension of its predecessor in order to build up the tension for the next episode. So that's it for these reviews. Thank you all for watching, and remember... While a jump to the sky leads to a rider kick, a hit to the subscribe and notification bell leads to more Tokusatsu reviews. Thank you.